The final point I want to make before we go into audio tool in depth is just that Soundation and audio tool, one's not better than the other. Just because we use Soundation through the four weeks doesn't mean that it's a better program than audio tool. They're just different. Soundation is going to be a little bit more familiar to you as you start to progress into standalone DAWs, and that's kind of why we used it. However, Audio Tool is really unique as a creative music making tool. And for that reason, I encourage you to check it out just as much because it's a lot of fun and it does things a little bit different. So when you get kind of tired and bored of the normal digital audio workstation uh, way of working, you can always go into Audio Tool and find that, oh my gosh, this is totally refreshing. I'm going about my music making in a totally new and creative sort of way. So here we go, we're inside of Audio Tool. Let's get started, let's go from scratch. But we're not really going from scratch here, as you can tell, it's given us a mixer. And I'm actually gonna start by deleting that because I want to explain every single cabling that goes on in here so that you don't get confused. And in fact, in Audio Tool, this whole concept of signal flow that I tried to stress in the actual course will make a lot more sense to you now if it was confusing to you then. But to start this out, I actually want to bring in a sample because inside of Audio Tool, we're able to bring in samples, whereas in Soundation, we really couldn't. Okay, so you might ask, where do I go if I want to find free sounds I can use for my creative music making pleasure? And the really popular website is freesound.org, and that's what we're going to use here. So once you set yourself up with an account, you can upload sounds, download sounds, and for the most part, you can use them without having to worry too much about any sort of copyright infringement. Now, I am going to go in here. I've searched for Chant, and I'm going to choose Creative Commons Zero. I'm choosing this license because with the Creative Commons Zero, you can use any sample you want, and you don't need to worry about any sort of crediting of that sound, of that sample. With some of these other ones, you can do the same thing, but you just have to make sure that you remember to link back to where you got the sample from. That's the whole idea behind attribution. So we'll go in here to Creative Commons Zero, and I've already picked out a sound that I like. We're gonna go ahead and use this one here. <laughs> Now, I just want to make it clear, I don't really, I'm not trying to make any sort of religious statement with this. I'm only using this because of all of the sounds that I was going through. This one had kind of the most beautiful tone, and to me, it would be the sound that I could most rework. In a professional setting, you have to be very careful and very sensitive about what sort of samples you take, especially if they're from a religious source. Okay, so I just want to make that point crystal clear. I'm using this because I love the sound. I have not trying to make any kind of religious statement with this. So <laughs> just to get that out of the way, once you go in here, you can go ahead and download this. I've already done that. I'm going to go into audio tool now, and I'm going to import that sample from a file. When you're working, let's say you have a synthesizer and you have all sorts of effects and it's really eating up your CPU down here in the bottom right, you can actually bounce things out to audio clips, which is really handy. But we're going to pull this in from a file. And this is basically telling you, don't be an idiot. Do not use copy. Do not take any sort of like sound that you might even have in your library, even from a sample pack and upload it here because you might have the rights to it, but nobody else does. So you need to make sure that you're not uploading anything that's going to get you or the uh, program itself, the company into trouble, which we are not doing by bringing in this sample here. So I'm going to click it. Let's bring it in. Let's get to work. Oh. We get a file import error. File is too large. The limit on audio tool for a sample is 30 seconds, and there's probably some sort of file size as well. I'm going to stick to just MP3 files because when you're creating music, you don't have to be so much a stickler for the quality of the sample itself. And a 320 kilobit MP3 is actually pretty good. So, what are we going to do to trim this down? Surprise, surprise, we're going to go into our old friend, Audacity. Hopefully this doesn't look brand new to you. We did cover Audacity a little bit uh, towards the end of the course, but we're going back in there again. This is a free waveform editor. I'm just going to go ahead, drag and drop my sample in like so. And now if I click play, we should be able to hear it. <laughs> So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find parts of this that I like and that I want to use in my actual track. Okay, and from just listening to that first little bit of the congregation singing together, I think that all of the people in there have very beautiful voices, but when they combine, not so harmonious. So I'm going to focus on the soloist, and I'm just going to look for a couple of little parts that I like. And from looking at this audio file, it's clear we have soloist, congregation, soloist, congregation, soloist, congregation, etc. So let's take a listen here and see if there's anything we really want. Okay, I like that one quite a bit. I'm going to drag, highlight what I want, and I'll click play to make sure this sounds good. It does. I'm going to need a little bit of a fade out on the end, but we can do that no problem. So I'll go in here to edit, clip boundaries, and I'm going to split, and I can go and take this first clip and delete it. And now I'm just going to go through and find some other parts that I like, and then I'll join you in a second. All right, so I split the parts out that I liked. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of this audio file. And now we can listen to this thing from the beginning and check it to make sure that it sounds like we want. Okay, so clearly we need to do a little bit of cleaning up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click here where the samples are separated, and I'm going to insert a little bit of silence in between both of these. So I'll just go to that location, generate silence. I've already set this to one second here. Perfect. Let's go to the other one. Just to make sure. Yep, and I'll go ahead and generate the silence again. And now all I have to do is really kind of work out my fade in and fade outs because you can hear there are some clicks and some pops. And let's see, what's going to be the most troublesome one? Probably this one will be. Yeah. So let's work with this one, and then I'll assume you could probably fix the other ones on your own if you have a sample like this. So let's see. I can probably delete a little bit at the front and then create a little bit of a fade in here. And I don't need that. And we'll do a little bit of a fade out. And normally that's all it really takes. So I'll pause the video again. I'll get my other samples to sound the way I want them to sound. And then we'll be able to bring this into Audio Tool. All right, so now that I've added in my fade in, fade outs, I got rid of a couple of clicks in there. I'm going to go ahead and export this as a new MP3. I'll put on the desktop and let's just call this um, Solo Singer. Okay, so MP3, I'll save it, click OK. In the options, I set it to be a 320 kilobit per second MP3. And now if we look on the desktop, we have our Solo Singer here like so. I can get rid of Audacity now and go in file import sample from file browse for it solo singer open it up and there we go so we have two choices one is loop the other choice is one shot so trying to load things in and use loop is very difficult because it sets a bpm for you to begin with and uh Let's just say I don't think it's maybe the most accurate thing in the world. So I like to use one shot and then kind of get the sound as I want it. So if I go to one shot here, I can play this back. All right, we can choose a name for this. We could add a description. We could add tags. And then we can choose, do we want to make this available to everybody or do we just want us to be able to see this? Uh, for this example, I'll use hide from the community. I'll confirm this. And now we have our sample. So once it loads itself in, we can see it if we go to the little sample browser here. And in fact, there are thousands and thousands of samples that people have made available. So you can really search for anything you want and probably find it in here. But I'll go to track since that's where this one will be found. And here it is, solo singer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to drag this in. But as you notice, nothing is happening. 
And that's because this is an audio clip. And so it needs to be held somewhere. All right. And the place where audio clips go, there's a couple of locations, but the normal place for something like this is going to go in an audio track. So you'll come over here to your tools. You can go through these, a mini mixer. Okay, audio track, cool. So I can bring that in like so. And when I bring that in, you'll see that a new little pop-up has appeared here. And this is where we can drag and drop our audio clip. So I'll go back into our sounds, go to track, grab this solo singer, bring it in. All right, and now if I click play, You can see we're getting signal there, and we're also getting signal here on our master output. So there's really not like a ton of audio editing options you get. You can double click here and that will open this up. And we do have a scissors tool, okay? It's called a slice tool here. And I can grab that if I want it. And I could go and I could now choose to slice this thing up into my three different parts. So why don't we go, let's change the resolution of this to like a 30 second note. If we want to zoom, we actually literally use this thing at the top here to zoom this in. Let's get it right near the start here. Go even 64th notes, I guess, if I really want to get it close. And I will chop it here. Scroll on over. Chop it at the end. And I'm not going to be super precise. All right, perfect. So I'll go back to my main selector tool. I'll delete that. I'll delete that. And now I have my three. But what's really important is understanding that even though you chop it up like that, it hasn't really changed a whole lot because we have our start and our end point here. All right, that's really what determines the length of these clips. So I'm going to zoom this out so I can see the end of my clip here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to bring it back. You can tell that we have this audio clip selected because it's a slightly different color. If I go to this one and double click it, you'll see that again, it's opened up this whole file. So actually we'll listen to this at the beginning. So you'll understand what it is I need to do to change this around. Let me actually just change the color on all of these also make that plum. And we'll make this that color. Okay, so here we go. Let's just play this. Turn loop off. So it has done what we wanted, but to be safe, what you want to do is you want to actually go in here and set specifically the boundaries here for your clips for when we start to move these things around. So I'll just go in here and do that like so. All right. So now if I want to move these, let's move it like right here and move this one like right here. It's playing what's in the brackets. And now one of the reasons why we've set the brackets like this is so if we loop it, it's just going to loop this section here. So if I pull this out, you'll hear the difference if I go and pull this back. It starts to loop from here. So it is really important that you do kind of set these because that's determining where things are actually starting and stopping. All right, so that's really the basics of working with audio tracks inside of Soundation. The last thing I'll show you is that you can indeed um, copy and paste these, but it's a little bit tricky. You can't right click and choose to do that. You actually have to look down to the bottom left where it will say, hold control to copy, control shift to create a virtual copy. And so I'm actually going to close this down. I'm going to choose control and then I can drag this and I can move it wherever I want to move it. Okay. So 